sinking ship goes home. The three-master Denmark, which saw four years of war in the United States Coast Guard, is officially returned to her Danish crew. Master of the Denmark, Knud L. Hansen, takes over the vessel. The American flag comes down and the flag of Denmark is hoisted. In April 1940, when the Germans invaded Denmark, this graceful 216-foot square rigger lay at anchor off Florida. She remained in the United States, and after Pearl Harbor was lent to the Coast Guard as a training ship. More than 2,000 American cadets learned the ways of the sea aboard her. Now she puts out to cross the Atlantic once more to her native land. National Medal of Honor for Lieutenant Colonel Boyington, Marine Corps Flying Ace, just home from Japanese imprisonment. President Truman decorates a group of 14 Marine and Navy men for heroism above and beyond the call of duty. Sergeant Harrell lost both hands on Iwo Jima. Pharmacist Mate Wallen, a sailor who in land fighting offered his life to save Marine comrades. And 17-year-old Private Lucas, who enlisted at 14, threw himself on an exploding grenade to save his fellow men. Congratulations from Navy and Army Chiefs of Staff for their valor. British frogmen, experts in underwater demolition. They crash dive in a training maneuver using self-contained oxygen tanks and rubber frog's feet to swim through otherwise impassable obstacles and prepare for demolition work. Men like these, fantastically uniformed, but performing a perilous and necessary military job, preceded landing troops into the beachheads of France, blowing up mines and harbor defenses. American underwater demolition teams on a swift Navy patrol boat prepare explosive charges for an attack on the underwater defenses of Balik Papan, Borneo, a hazardous assignment that must be perfectly timed. With split-second precision, the men spill out of their larger craft into a rubber boat alongside, and then into the sea. The explosive packs are thrown overboard, timed with each man's takeoff. Many kinds of equipment, mine detonators, measuring lines, firearms, even special radios were used on mission. In these actual combat pictures, Balik Papan shore defenses are attacked six days before invasion. With the job done, the men are picked up as swiftly as they were dropped. On board, the men get Brandy, another group of unsung heroes of the war. First session of the Council of Foreign Ministers closed in a stalemate, but that need not and should not deprive us of a second and better chance to get on with the peace. The Foreign Minister of the Soviet Union has not rejected our proposal for a peace conference. During the discussions, he admitted that it was correct in principle. And my hope is that after he has conferred with his government, his government will agree 
that the nations that fought the war, the world war, shall have a chance to make the world peace. We urged that those states, both large and small, which had fought and suffered in the war, must make the peace. This has been a people's war, and it must be a people's peace. To a British military tribunal at Lunenburg has brought a sordid assortment of Nazi war criminals, headed by the notorious Joseph Kramer, charged with responsibility for torture and mass murder of 50,000 prisoners at the German death camp at Belsen. Belsen's women, as savage as any of the men. Kramer's chief assistant, 21 years old and a veteran of five years of atrocities, is Fräulein Irma Greitzer. The accused were identifying numbers in early court sessions. There are 26 men, 19 women. Number two is Fritz Klein, German doctor at Belsen author of countless deaths. The average of men and women alike is 1,000 deaths apiece. The first batch of Nazi butchers, and one of the worst, awaits the verdict of allied justice. For Washington's most elaborate parade since before the war, spectators turn out in the hundreds of thousands. Chester W. Nimitz, Admiral of the Fleet, who steered American naval might to victory in the Pacific, receives the thanks of his countrymen. United States Naval Academy midshipmen lead a column of 5,000 marching Navy personnel in Nimitz honor. tribute to their Pacific commander, first high naval commander to return home for official welcome. Under Nimitz, the Marines staged a mounting series of amphibious operations to clear the Japanese from the 68 million square miles of the Pacific Ocean. Veterans of the Bloody Island campaigns ride in the parade. Marines, along with detachments of Navy waves and Coast Guard spars, represent the women of Nimitz forces. The Coast Guard's trained patrol dogs march in line with their handlers. A thousand naval aircraft from the fleet's mighty air arm fly overhead. A replica of the USS Missouri, scene of Japan's final surrender, is the reviewing stand, as Nimitz arrives at the foot of the Washington Monument. an enormously difficult job well done. A nation's thanks to Admiral Nimitz.